All right. And well, today's topic is the architect's five working stages. All right. So again, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, feel free. I'd love it for it to be a somewhat interactive presentation as it's a good bit of information. Um, so I, I don't want you all to just have all the, the questions at the end. All right. Um, and it's just a few of you, so we can make it quite intimate. Let me just close my window. Mm -hmm. All right, so what are the five working stages? Right, and another name for that quickly is the basic services that architects offer when working with clients. And the basic services or the five working stages are pretty much how the architect is able to go through a project with a client. Basically the terms and conditions of working with an architect. So how, they, how their relationship would flow through the course of the project, all right? And well, according to the TTIA, they have set a standard of five stages, right? So I have the, the, the scan of the booklet on the top right, and the TTIA, TTIA stands for the Trinidad and Tobago Institute of Architects, right? And according to their conditions of engagement, which was done in 1999, they have broken down the five or the, the basic services into five work stages, okay? And those stages are the briefing stage, the schematic design stage, and tender slash contract documents and construction administration slash project management. Um, one thing I want you all to note is that this is just a standard set by the TTIA, right? Each architect, each firm is going to vary bit by bit. So maybe one firm might, might lump together stage one and two, the briefing and schematic stage into one stage, and maybe another firm might lump four and five into one stage. So stages can overlap and the, 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 the terms of engagement can overlap from architect to architect, from firm to firm. All right, so this is just a standard that we're going with just for us to be able to understand what this is. All right. Um, so the, we start with the briefing stage, okay? And the briefing stage is pretty much the initial engagement between the architect and the client. Maybe the client comes to the architect to propose a project. Maybe I have a piece of land in Santa Cruz and I want to build a medical facility on that land. So the architect and the client start to discuss the mission, the goal, the objective of the project, start to briefly or in, in kind of vaguely discuss timelines, get a sense of budget, the fees, the fees for the architect versus the fees for the construction. Um, even things like legal, um, what is it called? Well, I, I give an example. So if the, if the client is coming to build a medical facility, we need to make sure that that site is approved to be able to build something like that. And it's not solely approved for residential housing, right? So it needs to be proved, approved for medical, for medical building, right? So making sure that the legalities are in check um, and really kind of ironing out, well, not ironing out, but kind of getting an understanding of what the client wants. What is the, the, the initial idea? What is the goal? What is the mission, the vision? And uh, yeah, what, what is the mission, the vision of the project? Um, and from that, the architect also maybe starts to make site visits if the client already owns the land or there's, there's property already established and the architect will start to look at things like climate, um, drainage, wind patterns, access onto the site, if maybe the site burns every year in May, any little details that could kind of add to the understanding of what the architect is working with with that particular site, because every site is going to be different, even if they're right next to each other. Things like drainage could be so different from a site that's, that, from sites that are right next to each other. All right, so that, that kind of sums up briefing. It's, again, it's just the initial conversations between the architect and the client. All right, so we go on to schematic design. And this begins to look at, I think, two major things to me that develop the design further. 
here we start to clarify the mission or the vision or the goal of the project. Is this a residential um, building? Is it a, a, a home for uh, a family of four? Is it a home for a family of five? Do you want three bedrooms, two bedrooms? Is it a place that you want to be able to... Sorry about that. Not sure my camera isn't working, but I'll continue. Are we all still hearing me? So is it a place where it's gonna have two bedrooms, three bedrooms? So we iron out the vision of the project at this point. And a scenario for that could be, maybe there's one client who wants to, a family of four, maybe mother, father, and two children, and also one well, additional member being the grandmother. So a family of five, but maybe the grandmother doesn't want to live within the same home as the, as the family of four. Right, maybe she wants her own private space. Maybe she wants to just have somewhere where she could be by herself, but always be able to kind of check in with the family, right? But you could also kind of make sure that that is the actual goal of the client. Maybe it is you kind of question, well, question if the granny really wants to live inside the house, it, it's, or is it that she actually wants the privacy? So you start to kind of give the clients different options and really start to solidify that vision. So that's one aspect of what I believe the, the schematic design is about. And another major aspect for me that generates the, the design is doing your site analysis. So gathering things like um, climate conditions, doing topographical surveys, boundary surveys, even soil surveys, and understanding where utilities come onto the site, whether it be electricity, water, sewage, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know why my camera keeps disconnecting. I'm sorry about that. But um, yeah, so in having those two basic foundations, you're able to start to generate the building itself. And at this point, when we come to the end of this stage, you are expected to get from the architect a package of drawings that could be just simple illustrations of the building and trying to flesh out what it can look like, what are the possibilities. So on the top, in the middle and on the right, I have two examples of that where these are these could just be hand-drawn sketches with marker, color pencil, pencil for the, the client to begin to just get an understanding. So they don't need to be 100% accurate. I mean, they should be drawn somewhat to scale, but they're just simple illustrations for the client to start to get a visual and a feel of what the space and the project is about. We're also going to start to bring in or talk about different consultants that the project might need, maybe different engineers, whether that be structural, um, sound, fire, and even quantity surveyors to be able to give us budgets for this project. All right, so that kind of wraps up schematic design there. So at the end, you should get a package of basically sections, elevations, plans, perspectives, and understanding of your site analysis and consultants. Okay, and we're going into the final design. And as that name suggests, it's the final design stage, right? Um, and this is where you definitely iron out the design. So from moving from sketches to actual scaled drawings, and these scaled drawings don't necessarily need to be computer generated. They can still be done by hand, but you're expected as a client, you're expecting to get proportional drawings. You're expecting to see the qualities of the building, the materiality, the how the building actually functions. You're expected to understand um, the structure. You're expected to be presented with the structural understanding of the building, how the services run, and the, the architect at this point is supposed to iron all of that out. So they have a full understanding of it, and you're supposed to be presented with that information. So on the top, the image is a render, which is just a computer generated image. And well, this render is just giving us basically a bit of the, the atmosphere and how this outdoor deck space can feel, how it can function. You have the pool on the left and the living room on the right and that stairwell straight ahead. So this is one example of what you can get at the end of this stage. And again, they don't always need to be computer generated drawings. They can still be hand generated, but you're expecting that these drawings are done to scale. So you get a clear understanding of the proportions of the buildings, the materials, the details, 
everything like that. And the, the architect at this point is working with the consultants that you would have discussed with you, he or she would have discussed with you in the previous stage to iron out all these um, details and give you a final, final design. After stepping out of this stage, you, you're not expected to come back with design changes at this point, right? And again, you would definitely have a much clearer understanding of the budget after the architect has done cost analysis maybe through a quantity surveyor. All right. Um, and this is another drawing. So kind of looking back at the schematic design, the drawing in the middle, it was a hand sketch for the schematic design stage. Maybe not 100% to scale, but once we get to the final design, it's definitely, it definitely needs to be to scale. It needs to show the materials so you can see some of the wooden deck versus the trees, the, to, um, the topography in the background, the boundaries, the setbacks, and all of these things. And at this point, I want to invite Robert to maybe or to give maybe a little scenario of how he's had to interpret the conditions of engagements with a client. Robert. Hi, everyone. So I just want to give a quick scenario. At final design stage, that's where you iron out all the details of the building for the client to understand and make a decision to move forward. So this part of our service is where we cut off. So any changes after this may incur additional charges depending on the architect working, right? Um, so a scenario that happened was, you know, if you have a client that's, that's, that's indecisive and you do all, you know, you do all the imagery to get them to make a decision and they make a decision, but they're not, um, you know, still not sure and we move ahead, then that will be cost that will be charges for us and the client. So we, you know, it's important you stay in this phase as long as possible to kind of make sure that everybody's on the same page before you move forward. So that's like kind of a quick scenario about um, final design stage. All right. So we'll Thank take you. Thank you. So from there, we're going into the tender and contract document stage. So this is stage four. So we're finished with the design. We know what the building is going to look like. We know the materials. We know how it's going to stand up. We know how all the services, the plumbing, the electricity, basically, theoretically, how the building is going to work, right? We get to this stage where we have to actually now detail the building and the kind of glamorous part of architecture people or the glamorous part of people associate architecture with the design and part is kind of to some degree over, but I think for a lot of architects, this is where they get a lot of satisfaction as well because they kind of get to see the building come to life. And some architects might do this stage or might do the detailing in the final design stage. Again, it, it kind of varies from person to person, but at some point, and maybe in stage four, you're going to have to detail every last inch of that building. How does it actually stand up? How does it work? When the, when the rain falls, how does the water leave the roof into the guttering? How does it get from the gutter into the ground? And where does that water go once it gets to the ground? How are the how is the roof actually connected to the walls, um, et cetera, et cetera? So on the image on the top, you can see that there are a lot of little callouts that point to almost every spot on the building, just identifying maybe its material, the thickness of the material, how the how the material is connected to the material that is connected to. Um, you even have to label the doors, we label the spaces, we give dimensions, heights, um, angles of roofs and stuff like that. So at this point, you're preparing a full package of tender drawings that would basically detail the building inside and out so easily that a builder can just take those drawings and build it, right? We're also submitting um, documents to possibly town and country to get approvals and also to other different bodies that would need or will need to get approvals from maybe like EMA, et cetera. And you're also submitting drawings to be tendered by different contractors. And this is where the architect kind of turns from 
it, the architect changed from just dealing with the client into being somewhat of a mediator between the client and the contractor, the person who is building the project or the person who's organizing for the project to be built. Okay, so that sums up um, stage four. And this is where we get into, oh, well, you can look at this drawing here. It's another example of how detailed the building gets. And again, you are expected to have a somewhat of an understanding of how the building is to be built as well. So you, you will also be presented with drawings like this. Okay, and we get into the final stage now, construction administration slash project management. And this is where the architect is more a mediator between client and contractor, where the architect is making sure that each side pulls their weight. So once a contractor is approved and, and in the point of tendering, the, you might have maybe three bidders from um, different contractors, maybe one with a very time efficient, well, maybe a very quick time of finishing the project and a, and a low budget, one with a longer period to finish the project and a higher budget, and one with maybe a medium um, time to finish, but also a high budget. And the architect is expected to give the client an understanding of which contractor they best feel suited to manage the project and complete the project in this, the, the, the budget and the time constraints that the contractor gave. And at this point, when the building is actually being erected, the architect is expected to make quality control visits or site visits to the, to the works to make sure that everything is being built to the specifications that they've, they've suggested. And if maybe the contractor needs um, some clarity on something, the architect will then go back and do a detail for that section. Um, if the architect comes onto the site and sees that maybe a wall is just not being built in the way it should be built, they would have discussions with the contractor to say, well, X, Y, and Z, this is not up to the standard. Um, how much longer do you need to actually get it to that point? Um, trying to understand the fees that are gonna to have to be absorbed, whether it be through the contract or the client, and making sure that that is resolved and also communicating and being as transparent as possible with the client to say, well, the contractor had a boo-boo here, they're gonna need an extra week to do this, but they are, they are absorbing the cost of it because it was their error, okay? And I think that's pretty much it. So if we just summarize all three, sorry, all five stages, the briefing stage is simply the initial talks between the client and the architect, discussion, the vision, the mission, um, budget, timeline, uh, contracts, stuff like that. Schematic design pretty much talks about analyzing the site and deriving a concept for the project and using that to try to drive the design forward through sketches, meetings, illustrations, etc. And final design sums it up. It's the final design. It's where design and pretty much ends. We're done with that. You get a clear vision of that building inside and out, as at least aesthetically and structurally. And we go on to the tender and where the architect is now doing their details, sending documents out for approval, tendering the project, and then we go into construction administration, where the architect is the mediator between the client and the contractor. So that sums up the five basic services, the five stages that an architect would use to engage with clients, well, according to the TTIA. Um, so I hope that was insightful. If anyone has any questions, I'd love for you to ask them now. Hello, good afternoon. Hi. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Lokito Fabi. I'm just hoping you hear me properly. Yes, hearing. So, um, I thought Scott introduced to uh, an architect about three years ago. Mm -hmm. The most part, everything that you would have outlined uh, it was done. Um, I kind of started following your page on Instagram. I think it was like a year and a half, most of my own. 
if not I could be myself. Um, and you all were involved in a project in um, up, uh, in Nordec, yeah. up from the Bond Road. Hello? Pardon? I, you're breaking up a little bit. I don't oh, sorry about that. I'm saying that, that I, you know, I was kind of um, intrigued when I saw that you all were involved in that project up um, going on to Paragon Beach. Uh, this is a right by our north deck up there, up on Dupont Road. Yes, on the north coast. Yeah. Correct. correct. So I have a property probably as you go flies 30 seconds from there. And that's mm -hmm. it. And I've always, you know, had the challenge of wanting to get something done there. But mm -hmm. property is only, for example, a 9,000 square feet. It's basically a house spot up there. Mm -hmm. right? And I, I don't know what are the limited or the legal um, ramifications. If it is, I would uh, try a relatively expensive bill, which I think will do beside justice. Mm -hmm. In time, there's no real derivative value in terms of me saying, well, listen, I can have this as an approved um, structure. Uh, that being said, I'm always wondering what options do I have? Hello, I'll, I'll take this one. Hi, um, Janil, it is? Oh, well, yeah, this is Janil's husband. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, so you say you have a property on the North Bay, on, sorry, um, of Fompado. Yeah. Going down to Paragon, yeah? Yeah. Um, the one thing to look out for with, with, with working up there is that the, I mean, I'm not sure, I'm not sure you're, if you're in the same spot where- you I am. Right. Okay, so, so uh, sorry. The, the one thing you need to look out for is that, you know, you, you approvals are tricky. Because it's not an approved, it's not an approved subdivision. Right, correct. I understand that. And that being the case, well, okay, so that being the case, my additional question is, it doesn't make sense for somebody to, you know, well, I, I suppose it's based on your budget, but it's very difficult for me to say, well, you know, I'm going to spend seven, eight hundred thousand to one point five to construct a structure that I know, you know. And, and that's really why it, where my interest lies. Do I you know, build something so extravagant, so detailed that I get an architect involved and it costs, you know, it's not really cost effective in the future for me or, yeah. you know. But that, it depends on the comfort you're looking for. Yeah, I understand. Okay, thank you. Cheers. Um, Christelle, you have a question. Feel free to, feel free to ask. Hi, good afternoon. This is um, Arif, Crystal's husband. No um, I have a quick question. I've, um, Crystal and I have been um, basically looking around for some properties. Um, so we kind of weigh, weigh in the, the benefits versus the cost of purchasing land and building or just purchasing um, property, um, a house, and basically fixing it up. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to gauge the average cost of construction per square foot um, in recent times because what I've been told and I know with respect to COVID and the, the, the supply constraints in the economies now, um, that costs have been going up. Um, I've been getting different quotes basically um, from just estimates from let's say 650 per square foot to even closer to 900 per square foot. But I just want to know what's a, 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 a average range per square foot for construction now in Trinidad. Okay, I would also let Robert answer that one. That's his I, I, I think I think you could budget anywhere from eight hundred to twelve hundred dollars, depending on it depends on your site and the quality of um, the quality of building you want. Okay, thanks a lot. No problem. Yeah, so anyone else who has a question, feel free, feel free to ask anything at all, anything about the presentation, anything you might want me to go over. Now is your chance to ask.
if not, then maybe we we'll wrap it up there. Hi, good afternoon. Hi. I came in late. I'm Kanika Gomez. Sorry about that. No but problem. I have one question. Um, you gave a rundown of all the steps, right? Um, but yeah. if someone has um, uh, drawings of a project, let's say, would you all, um, do you all, can somebody use your services to uh, get the contractors and supervise it, that sort of thing? Or is it that you have to take um, you all for the entire process? <laughs> Hi, Kenita. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, that, that will depend on the project, really. We'd have to kind of, we'd have to evaluate that based on, the, that's, 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 that's a difficult one to say. We, I, I won't say a hard no, but it will, okay. it will depend on, you know, what, if, if, if the project, project fits with our core values, then definitely we will help you. Okay, understood. That's our sort of, basis for judging you know, what we work, what kind of work we take on. Okay, and and just on a, as a add on to that, if it, let's say, um, it's, it's streamlined with your core values, if um, if if in reviewing it, uh, you see the need to make adjustments and, you know, to, I guess, improve it, I suppose. Um, is that something that you all will work with? Yes, definitely. Okay. But it is important to know whether this is a hillside project or not, because we basically focus, our focus is hillside project main. Oh, only hillside. All right. But only I mean, again, again I, I'll, I'll, I'll be more than willing to have a chat with you about okay. your project, how we can help, even if we don't work together, we can point you in the right direction. Oh, okay. Okay. But you are mainly hillside with your preference to work with. That's our focus, yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. I feel like we have one more question. I think someone just has one more question that they are a bit nervous to ask. Is that anyone here? This one question that it is a bit nervous to ask. They want to get it out before we leave. Shea Diaz has any questions about the presentation? Um, no. Well, yes, about the the briefing stage when creating a brief, that is that is basically like the um the checklist that the architect about abides by, right? Yeah, well, I could I could give you my understanding of it when, or in terms of maybe a design brief, it, it's somewhat of a checklist. I think when it, if you're talking about design brief, we're maybe looking at the mission, the vision, or the goal of the project. So. Is it that you want a four bedroom house? Do you want a living room, a kitchen, dining area? Do you want a, a two port car garage or one port? Um, do you want a maybe a studio space that could transform into a eating space at the end of the day? So it's pretty much kind of listing out, well, in one aspect, the design brief is kind of listing out the, the rooms or the mission and also any other understandings that could gets us more clarity in what it is you actually want out of your project. I don't know if Robert has anything to add to that. Um, nope, that sounds like you've not okay. Okay, All thank right. you for the clarification. No problem. Okay, well, I'm assuming we have no more questions and we can wrap this up there. So thank you everyone for coming. And if you have any follow-up questions or you want to book a consultation, just feel free to reach out to us on social media and like and subscribe on all our platforms. Okay, have a good evening. Bye-bye. Thank you. Good class. Thank you. All right, thank you. No problem.